Marion Braidford was daughter of Hugo, Laird of Lamington, born sometime around the year 1274, although there is little evidence regarding her life or even existence for that matter. Her story, though, has certainly captivated generations of people, and her tale often woven into the very fabric of William Wallace's life. However romanticised the stories may be, it is her murder that is believed to have fueled Wallace's contempt for the English. After all, what is a story without love and tragedy? Marion, it is believed, was murdered by the Sheriff of Lanark, a cold and cruel man called Hasselrig. If the folk stories are true, Marion secretly wed Wallace and they both had a daughter together who would later marry into the Bailey family of Lamington. Perhaps his young baby, his young child, was a ward of his family after the death of both her parents. This young girl, also called Marion, identified herself as a daughter of Wallace many decades after his death, although contemporary sources would argue otherwise. On hearing that Wallace had killed many Englishmen during a skirmish, Hesserig decided to set an example to any Scotsman considering such a contempt again. He chose Marion for the purpose of angering William and ordered his soldiers to drag Marion into the muddied street in front of everyone. He took out a sharp dagger and with his own two hands he murdered her. William Wallace has inspired writers throughout the ages to write and tell the stories of his daring deeds. There is no doubt he struck fear into the hearts of the English. From what the poet Blind Harry and others tell us, William Wallace came to the Clyde Forest after successfully ambushing the English at Loudon Hill. This event is supposed to have taken place in July 1296. After the skirmish, Wallace took refuge in a cave near Colburn to rest his men. It is thought that Wallace met Marion Braveford here for the first time and learned about the arrogant and cruel sheriff of Lanark called Hesselrig. Marion was 18 years of age and the daughter of the Laird of Lamington. She informed Wallace about the sheriff whom Blind Harry describes as cruel, outrageous and spiteful in his actions. He had put to death Marion's brother, who had come along with Marion to stay in his father's townhouse in Lanark, supposedly to avoid trouble. His father was to be disappointed in this respect. Marion Braidford is often said to have suffered all and bore herself right lowly. So amiable she was so benign and wise, courteous and sweet, full of nobleness, of well-ordered speech. Wallace fell in love with Marion, but according to some sources decided that it would not be wise to marry her until Scotland had been freed from the English. It may be the fact that Marion was pregnant that made him change his mind. So enraged was Wallace in hearing of Marion's plight and the murder of her brother that he decided to visit Lanark for sport. The sport in question was the murder of any English soldier on sight to avenge the wrongs heaped upon the Braidford household. Wallace did not want to rush into things and he wanted to build up his forces but his hand was forced by the taunts from the English soldiers when he was leaving St. Kentigan's one Sunday morning. 
At first they tried a bit of name calling to bait him, and when this failed they mocked his sword calling it a knife. Even this did not provoke him. However, when they said that his daughter was a bastard, and that the priests of the chapel of St. Nicholas had been sleeping with Marion, his temper snapped. A fracas ensued, and Wallace's men joined in. The English took a severe beating. There were fifty Englishmen either dead or badly wounded. But there was still enough left to force Wallace to retreat to Marion's house. There, Wallace's men continued their resistance, but a decision was made to retreat to Cartland Crags and hide there, since it was easy to escape into the countryside. Wallace's men made their escape. Marion was not so lucky. Beside himself with impotent fury, Hasselrig determined to wreak vengeance on Wallace. Marion, who did not escape, was now his prisoner, and he decided to execute her, not only to warn other Scots about the dangers of treachery and treason, but to deny Wallace the company of the only woman he truly loved. The way she was murdered is said to have been cruel and barbarous, cold and unthinkable. She was dragged from the muddied streets, and in front of the townsfolk of Lanark, Hasselry used his own dagger to do the deed. When the news reached Wallace, he was beside himself with grief. However, he bided his time before planning his attack on Lanark Castle. The English, meanwhile, sank into complacency, thinking that the rebels had been terrified into submission. Gathering his small forces at Cartland, Wallace stole into Lanark in the dead of night. Foolishly, the English had neglected to guard the wall of the town. Silently through the dark, Wallace and his followers crept up to the castle and again luck was on their side. Overpowering the guards, Wallace's band got access to Hesselrig's apartments. Startled from the depths of sleep, Hesselrig was unable to defend himself. Wallace, it is said, split his skull to the collarbone with his massive two-handed claymore sword. Hesselrig's son, hearing the commotion, rushed up the stairs to his father's bedroom, only to be cut down himself. Meanwhile, the young Orchinlek, one of Wallace's followers, plunged his dagger into the almost lifeless body of Hesselrig to Mac Sikar to check if a sheriff was really dead. That day was the turning point in what would eventually lead Wallace on a rampage to free Scotland of English control. It also led to his own execution at Smithfield. But his martyrdom and his bravery lived on in the hearts of all Scottish men, women and children. Even today, more than 700 years later, William Wallace stands as a symbol of honour throughout Scotland. Marion's existence may only be a story to romanticise the life of William Wallace, but her legend will always ignite something deep in us all, love. Which leads me to one last thing. Times may be difficult and our future uncertain, but with a lot of love, we can all make this world of ours a better place for each and every one of us. From Yana and I, we thank you all very kindly for watching these 13 stories we have created for Halloween. May our love and kindness be with you all. Stay safe and see you all soon. Bye for now.